Good morning guys, Eric the History Detective. This is going to be part two of uh, metal detecting that uh, 1864 Union campsite here in Northern Virginia. Uh, we still got some pretty good weather here in Virginia. I think it's going to creep towards 50 again today, but it is very windy outside. So uh, I'm going to start this video here in my garage. Got the Jeep loaded up and we're ready to go. Uh, let's head out to the field and see what we can find. Okay guys, we have arrived. Um, right out there is the field we're going to be working in uh, again today and where i found those uh, bullets and such yesterday was out here in this spot right here where the field is higher than if you come towards where i'm sitting right now the field down there is lower and then out here in the distance where that tree line is is where the road is and that road was there in uh, 1864 when this camp was here and I'm gonna to try to work my way out towards the road today and see what we can find along it. And I got a couple other spots in this field I wanna hit. But I'm bringing you up to speed here on why did I start originally on this high ridge right out there. And the reason I do that is because these guys, they walked in the mud, they camped in the mud, they lived in the mud. And when they would go into camp, these guys like to be on the highest point. They knew about water drainage and they knew the highest point that they could get those uh, tents set up on would be the driest point. So when I go out to a field like this, I always like to start on the high ground and then work my way into the low ground. I know you can't see it, but between where I'm sitting right now and I work my way out to that ridge, this down in here is really marshy. It would have been marshy in 1864 too, and that wouldn't really be a pleasant uh, place to pitch a tent. We might find some stuff in there. We'll give it a shot. All right here we go all right guys we're back on the ridge there's the old mine lab and uh, i apologize for the wind getting some big gusts out here today got ourselves our first civil war relic about a 10 inch hold just like yesterday come over here to the pile and i was slinging the dirt and work with the sun here right over here right there there we go that's our first one today. Definitely going to be a bullet. Let's take a look at what we got. Wiping it off here. And you know what? Here we got, uh, just like the end yesterday, we got another uh, burn side carbine bullet right there. And that's a nice one. We're going to put that in the old pocket. And keep working the ridge as uh, I work my way out to the road. I dug a little bit of trash. Um, over here, uh, some flat nails and uh, a pop top before I got to the burn side right here. And uh, I could only find the man who invented the pop top. Every metal detectorist knows that uh, those things are literally everywhere and you dig a lot of them. I just throw them in a bag, take them out of here with me so nobody else finds them and in the trash they go where they belong. So there's the burn side, nice find. See you soon. Okay guys, here we go. There's the mine lab. There's my plug, there's my hole. Still digging in that 10 inch zone, which uh, the plow line is. And uh, we're gonna be into another good find here. Same as the first video from yesterday. I'm gonna point to it. You can just see a couple rings poking through the dirt right there. And I think as yesterday, that's gonna be a nice sharps. Let's take a look at what we got. All right, clean that off just a little bit. Sharps bullet and I'm not too far from where I was digging them yesterday I'm about halfway to the road at this point out there in the distance by the trees just kind of working my way again along that high spot and I explained that why earlier set this down here for a minute and I want to come back over here and if you look at my mine lab coil I'm running an 18 inch disc on that mine lab and when I get a good hit I pull out about an 18 inch plug and the hole is about the size of the coil and that way uh, if you saw the first video I had one bullet down in a wall I try to dig a big hole with the target centered therefore we don't damage it with our shovel and uh, we get it in one shot so there's the plug dirt pile there's our sharps see you in a bit okay guys quick uh, metal detecting lesson here while I got this hole opened up and my dirt pile and if you look right there on my glove that is the dreaded 
22 caliber bullet. Why do I say it like that? Because those little pieces of lead, which are modern, wreak havoc on uh, metal detectors. It sings like it's uh, gonna be an eagle button or something spectacular. You're flipping out the sod, you're going through the dirt, and it is so hard to find. And then pinpoint here with our trusty pinpointer, then you finally get that little sucker located and it's a 22. And it takes a while to find those things when you're sifting through all this dirt. And sometimes they'll drop into the bottom of the hole and you'll be sifting through that too. But uh, hey, that's part of metal detecting. Don't give up, put those little things in your pocket, throw them in the trash. All right guys, we got something we've been looking for for a while. If you were with me in the last video, you will see right there, that is Goody Green. That is exactly what we're looking for. That's what an eagle button would come out of the ground looking at. Let's look at it together and see what we've got here. And that is gonna be an eagle button back. So what we have here is the face where the eagle would be is missing. It would have been attached right there in the front. If we look at the back, there's the shank where it was sewn onto the uniform. So we got half an eagle button here. That's that beautiful green patina color we're searching for. Nice little shank on the back. And we're gonna keep searching. Now I do wanna show you that it was very hard to isolate this target. It was deep. It's probably about 10 or 12 inches down there. And you'll notice I had to make an extra large hole that was still in the wall. So uh, don't give up on your targets. I fought this one out of the ground and you can do the same. And we're gonna keep on hunting. The wind got a nice hole opened up here. We're gonna go in there together. Target's still in there. I'm positive that you can see that. There it is. We're gonna come down here, pick it up. Let's see what we got. Definitely gonna be a bullet. And what do we got in here today? Bring it up here. And there we go. Right there's another sharps. Brings it up to the light of day. Imagine that that thing has not seen the light of day since the Civil War. All right, great find. Let's keep at it. Okay guys, earlier I was talking with you about the high spot in this field. And if you look out here, you'll see that ridge line that I've been working on. I had to run back to the Jeep and charge my phone. So I'm back at the Jeep and you can see in the distance, there's all my gear. And again, I am right on the backbone of that ridge line and I got four holes opened up out there uh, while my phone was charging and all of them have good stuff in it so we're going to walk out there right now and see what we found okay guys we're back on the ridge I'm going to pan up a little bit and you can see the point of the ridge here with the mine lab over there and the holes opened up we're going to go to the first hole right here and the uh, relic is going to be already out of the hole and it's going to be in the dirt pile and i bet you're already starting to see it it is right there we have another bullet we'll pick it up together clean it off see what we got another burn side nice one all right we're going to make our way around here and check out the other holes all right guys hole number two the artifact is still in the hole you can see it in the center of the screen right there I'm going to reach down and gently pull that one out and let's take a look at what we got right there all right another burn side right there right in the wall on the hole and uh, that's why you got to be careful digging them you don't want to nick them in case they get stuck in the sidewall we are trying to dig them on center so uh, let's move on to the next one okay sorry about the wind this one was really tough to pinpoint I've already gotten it out and cleaned it off because it is what looks like a rock but that is actually another piece of camp lead. Those things ring uh, really loud in your detector, even though they are kind of small. And that's what was in this hole over here. And like everything else out here, we're looking at about eight to 10 inches. Okay, last but not least, we got hole number four opened up. I put a stick right there because it's tough to see. It's pointing right at it. We're gonna reach around here, pick that up, see what we've got there. And that is another burn side. So got ourselves a nice little pile of burn sides off this uh, ridge line here as we're working our way still out towards the road. I still got about an hour or two left and uh, we'll keep at it. Okay guys, got another 
nice relic here. I got my pin pointer in the hole there so you can see about how deep it is. That's an eight inch pin pointer. The hole's another two or three inches uh, deeper. And if we come right over here, I've already pinpointed it. It's right here. And uh, again, sorry about the wind, but uh, that is going to be a really interesting piece of camp lead. And we're gonna keep that. That's a nice one. You never know what you're gonna find with camp lead. Uh, it was melted into all kinds of different shapes for different reasons. And uh, we know we're in a good spot when you start finding this stuff because they had campfires up here. And I have found a ton of it up here. It's just spread out all over the place. All right, see you shortly. Okay guys, another good find here. It is so windy outside. I had to get out of that field and uh, move down a slope. It was blowing me all over the place. So I come down here and now I'm working along a creek. And we got our first good find along the creek. And if you follow my finger, it's right there in the pile. work right here along this creek for a little bit. I got about an hour uh, before I got to get out of here. See if we can't do some good down here. See you soon. Okay guys, opened up a hole right here and I uh, don't know what it is yet. We're going to find out together, but what I do see is what I want to see. There's some goody green right there and I'm going to reach down here and we're going to start peeling away some of that dirt to see what we've got. What do we have right here? Oh boy. That sure feels like an eagle button. And it looks like an eagle button. And it is an eagle button. That is a nice button right there. Full shank. There's the shank right there on the back. Oh, and at the end of the day, I will clean this up so that you guys can see it. It's gonna be nice. Uh, there is the eagle underneath all that dirt. And this is going to be, sorry about the centering probably our best find for today. I've only got about 30 minutes left. And uh, since I did touch on earlier the importance of working on hilltops and such, I will tell you that uh, working along creeks can be just as productive. Uh, soldiers needed water obviously to survive and they needed a lot of it and there were a lot of soldiers. I love working along any type of waterway, be it river, be it creek. There's our nice eagle right there. And uh, creeks can be productive like this one here today. Okay guys, sorry about the wind. I'm gonna to try to speak up. Uh, that was where the eagle button was. That over there is where the Burnside carbine was. And I come here, I got a hole right in between them. And if we look down here, see that little white speck in there, right there. I do believe we have another Burnside. Let's get that peeled out of there, clean off a little dirt. And oh yeah, that's what we got. Right between the first burn side and the eagle button. So whenever you get into an area and you start digging relics, you uh, hit that first relic and then you've got to work really hard around it and most likely you will start turning up other relics right in that same general area. Another burn side, put that in our pocket and see you soon. Okay, here we go. We are in the same spot and two burn sides and an eagle button. And if you look right here, there's another bullet in there, and not going to be surprised if it's a burn side. We have just been on burn sides today, and there you go, another burn side. And we are in a tight, tight area here that's maybe six feet by four feet, and we're digging all this stuff out of the same spot. And I'm going to keep at it. All right, see you soon. Okay, same spot. Got our hole over there and our plugs right there. And with a little toss, I think you can see it. It landed right there in the middle of those couple of dirt clods. Again, it's going to be a burn side. They are just popping up everywhere today. I found more burn sides today than I think I've ever found uh, metal detecting total. I mean, they are just all over the place littering uh, the ground around here. So, uh, about 30 minutes left today. We'll stay on it. All right, still going, still doing good in the same general location. And man, is that wind just wreaking havoc out here today. But if we look right over here in my pile, I do have another bullet. And I'm going Burnside. There's another one. 
Just racking up burn sides today. Nope. It's a Sharps. Sure is. That is a Sharps carbine bullet. And that's our second Sharps today. So we'll keep searching. Okay, guys, I'm out of time. And this is how we're gonna have to finish our day. We got one last good target I just popped out of the ground. If you look in the center of your screen, you can probably see it. There it is right there. We're gonna pick it up together and see how we finish. We got ourselves a nice bullet here and what's it gonna be? And we finished the day with a burn side. Very, very nice. It has been a fantastic day out here. I'm gonna pack it in, hike back to the Jeep and take it on back to the house. Well, we are back in the garage where we started our day and out of the wind, and it was a phenomenal day. I'm about to unload the Jeep, go upstairs and uh, clean these relics. So I'm gonna close out with a photograph of uh, everything we found today, and it was a Burnside day. I've never seen that many Burnsides come out of the ground anywhere. Um, that was a lot of them. And uh, it's like I said in my first video, that site has been hit for decades and hit hard. We go in there for two days and we have just come out with a ton of relics. So what's coming up in the future? Uh, I'm not going to be, be able to have the time to get back into that site for another week or two. Um, on Monday, I will be metal detecting down in the Shenandoah Valley at a friend of mine's place. He's got a campsite on his property that we found about three years ago. A lot of good stuff comes out of there. Um, we're going to do some videos, see if we can't find something good. Tuesday, uh, I hope to get back out with my daughters and have them do some of the videoing so I can show you guys some of the techniques that I'm going to use with the machines uh, to make metal detecting a little bit easier and hopefully so you can find relics too. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to get some more videos, and we'll see you soon.